Hey everyone, I'm Dan. My girlfriend and I are building an expedition truck and restoring a yacht. So today I'm out on the boat and I'm going to install the auxiliary batteries. I've got six 115 amp hour AGM batteries. Ideally in this situation I'd use 3.2 volt LFP lithium cells and just build the, the size battery that I want. But I had these batteries from another project so I know they're pretty heavy and they're pretty old school but I'm going to make use of what I've got. So let's go in and I'll show you where I'm going to install them. These are the fuel tanks that I put in. If you haven't watched that video, uh, I'll try and put a link somewhere in this video to go and watch it. But after I put these in and made that video, I got a, a lot of information came to light about ways that I could have done it better. Um, I'm sure it'll probably be the same with the batteries, but I don't really have a good system of getting everyone's advice before I do something. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna split the six batteries up into two battery banks of three batteries. So it'll be two 350 amp hour banks or 345 amp hour banks. I'm gonna put one here under this seat and I'm gonna put one here under this seat and then just run leads to a isolator switch, which is over there. So the first thing I need to do is make an enclosure for each each side. I'm just going to make it out of marine ply. The batteries will just fit neatly down inside it and it'll have a lid that goes on top. So thank you very much for watching. Let's get started. These are the boxes that are going to house the batteries. There'll be three batteries in each box, one on either side of the hull. So now I'm just going to give them a sand and clean them up a little bit, then we'll paint them and put them in. While we're waiting for those enclosures to dry, I'm going to start hooking up all the wiring. So the wiring is going to run to this switch. One bank will be on two, one bank will be on one and then you can have the option of running them off both or isolating them completely. So this switch used to be up here because the auxiliary batteries used to be over there but the battery banks that I'm putting in are a fair bit bigger. So I'm going to move this switch down to here so it's a bit closer. So I've just got to drill a hole through here and I'll mount this and then I'll start running the cables for the battery banks. So for the cables I'm using this 30 mil, 30 millimeter squared cable it's it's for it's a auto cable for your crank batteries on your car it's pretty heavy duty but you can't really have you can't really you know overdo it when you're talking about supply lines for battery banks so i'll run these i've got to make sure that they're both exactly the same length because if they're not that can cause problems with when you're charging from solar panels so i'll i'll run out the longest line then i'll make them both the same i'll run them to this switch then I'll mount the enclosures, and then all we need to do is put the batteries in and hook it up. I'm just putting some lugs on the end of the leads. I don't actually have a crimping tool at the moment, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way, or the rural way. I'm just getting a punch and a mash hammer, and then That's it, done. I know there's people out there that won't agree with this method, but I've got a saying that I try and live by, which is don't let perfect be the enemy of good. All right, I've had a change of heart. I do this all the time when I'm building things. In the planning stage, I think I've worked out the best way to do it, and then I start building it and I realize that there's a better way or that I don't like it. So I'll just show you the reason. I was gonna have three batteries here and three batteries here, but I really don't like it. It's gonna take up too much room and it's gonna to be too invasive. So what I'm gonna do is go back to where they originally were. I'm gonna put three on this side, mounted on the side like that. And then I'm gonna put three equally on the other side underneath the uh, kitchen bench there. That area up in there doesn't get much use, so it's a good spot for them. Yeah. 
Today I'm making up a frame for some solar panels to go on the back of the boat. I've got two panels, they're 350 watts each. I'm going to hook them up in parallel. So I'll build the aluminium frame and I'll make sure the panels fit and then we'll go out to the boat and we'll mount the frame, put the panels on and hook them up to the battery. I'm using 30 by 30 by 3 mil aluminium angle for, to make the frame for the panels. And I'm just welding them up with a MIG. So don't ever let anybody tell you you can't weld aluminium with a MIG because you can and it's really easy. I've finished welding up the frame. If you come around here and have a look, this is typical of welding aluminium or welding anything. You look down this line here. You can see that it's totally bent out of shape. So now we've got to clean this frame up a bit and we'll try and bend it back straight, as straight as we can, and then we'll go out in the boat and install it. The good thing about aluminium is that it's easy to bend back. And that's done it. In fact, I've gone a little bit too far. So I'll just bend it back a bit. Like this. That's not bad. That'll be alright. So this is where the solar panels are going to go and initially I was just going to bolt the frame straight down to this frame and I was in the process of doing that and one of the guys here at the boat club who's far more knowledgeable than me walked past and he said oh why don't you make it so the panels can pivot like this and you can sort of follow the sun you get a lot more power so I thought all right I'll do that so now what I'm going to do is weld just a, a, a bit of tube underneath the center of this so it sits up a bit higher like that and then put some arms on the back of it that can extend in and out so it can pivot like this and then we'll be able to follow the sun around a bit with it and we should be able to get a fair bit more power pulled these off the old solar panel so we're going to put them on the new frame and that's going to allow it to tilt back and forth okay there it is so we can go all the way down like that and get the sun and then go all the way back and we're going to put some arms out the back to stabilize it so that's what we're, that's what's next so I've got these telescopic arms to put on the back of the bracket and this is going to, these will allow it to lift up and down and support it in any position. So I just got them from a caravan shop. They lift up and down, you can lock them in any spot. And I've got some fittings to mount them onto the brackets. got the bracket and the arms mounted. I decided to leave the arms long so I could tilt it all the way over without having to slide them up. 
I'm not sure if that's the best way, but if I want to, I can always shorten them and change the angle a bit later. So now I'm gonna put the solar panels on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of silicon around the frame, put the panels in, and then I'm gonna put some rivets through the bottom just to hold them in. So we're going to connect the two panels in series and run them to the charge controller and then the charge controller will sort out the voltage before it goes to the batteries. So we've just got this solar, ca solar cable, it's, I think it's four millimeters squared, and then we've just got some cable glands to go through the deck with. So we'll hook them up, put it through the deck, run it to the charge controller and then hook it up to the batteries. Okay, there we go. So we're just going to pull these cables apart, run them down through the through each cable gland, and then we'll just cable tie them back together underneath. This is the charge controller that we're using. It's a Victron 30 amp charger with Bluetooth. So, and we're just going to run some breakers. So, we'll, I've just got this DIN rail that we'll screw underneath the cockpit there. We'll run the panels into the breakers, and then out of the breakers into the charge controller and from the charge controller to the batteries and I'll probably put some breakers on the batteries as well just to just for a bit of extra protection so there's our setup we got the panels coming into this breaker then into the controller then out of the controller into the breaker and to the batteries so we've got three on this side and then we've got three on this side under the bench and I hooked them up in parallel a couple of days ago. So I've allowed them to balance. Now all the batteries are balanced. The voltage is exactly the same. Each bank runs to this isolator here. So you can choose bank one, bank two, or both, or off. So I'm just gonna run the panels or from the charge controller to the feeder on this isolator. So we can choose to charge bank one, bank two, or both of them at the same time. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but this is how I'm gonna do it for now. And then I'll seek some advice on that. We'll just go under and flick the breaker on. So we'll have charge going to the batteries and then we can hook our phone up to the controller and see how it's working. All right. I'll flick the breaker on, but I'm not sure what's happened. See if we can connect to it and find out. I've connected to the charge controller. So I'll just show you what it's reading. shows you how many watts are coming in it's reading it's pretty much full sunlight there is a bit of cloud around we're reading about 227 watts so i'm wondering if both panels are working but they probably are and yep so it tells you the voltage from the solar the voltage that it's putting into your batteries and it all seems to be working pretty well so that's it the solar panels are hooked up the batteries are in we have power now I just got to sort out the lights and a few other things and we should be pretty right. We can just about start cruising, I think. So thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you soon.